Well, Pete McGuire from XM joins me today to talk the world of global markets and well, look at a few charts. Pete, great to have your company uh, today, especially after, well, the events of the last 12 hours or so and a few big events on the week ahead. I thought I'd start actually with a slightly, um, well, less conventional way to, to tackle the trading world, but it was a chart that I, I thought really uh, summed up perhaps the uh, situation in the US banking system at the moment, which was just looking at the Fed discount window. You, apply, uh, you, you, you put this in your, in your note this morning. We'll get this chart yes. up now if possible, because I just was wondering if you could explain to the folks at home what we're looking at here and putting it into contest, because I think it really is fascinating. Well, exactly. Yeah, if you can just punch that up for me, please, Kyle, that'd be fantastic. I just need to um, make that a little larger on my screen. I can't, there it is there. Pardon me. So as you can see, and, and we did that, that was a fairly comprehensive note this morning. We can see what happened as far as 2008, put our mind back to that period in time and then, you know, flatlining nearly the best part of a decade, then with the pandemic and then with the banking crises. So we've seen the Fed's fund rate. We've taken on board what uh, Fed Chair Powell and his rhetoric as far as ramping up rates. And the Fed discount window is truly a mechanism or a, or a barometer with what the Fed's prepared to do and how it's moving forward and that lending rate to other banks and other institutions. And a, really, from a snapshot, I think it's a crucial element or crucial uh, instrument for day traders to certainly be mindful of, especially in these markets at the moment. Kyle? Yeah, I suppose it does give you a little bit of a sense of the stress and maybe a panic, for lack of a better term, in uh, the financial system, banking system at large, trying to tap the Fed for short-term loans there, liquidity effectively. But um, fascinating, just because of obviously the, the comparison there to the pandemic in, in 2008. But um, yeah. let's get on to perhaps the, the task at hand, we'll call it, and have a look at the technicals on a couple of markets. Kicking off, naturally, we have to with the S&P 500. We'll get that chart up now. Uh, there you go. What are you looking at there uh, when it comes to the S&P 500? Because uh, also worth noting, that's this, this is a weekly chart. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got to put our mind back to, you know, the, the sort of what we've experienced. And we had that nice rally, as we all know, leading into the last part of last year. And then th that was the end of 22. You see that it was fairly tumultuous over that period running into 23. And then since then, since, you know, October, it's been in an upward trend, but it's consolidating at the moment. You've got that S&P, you know, down 1.65% after Jay Powell's comments. Where's it off to from here? Look, it's still above that 200 day moving average, Kyle. It's above the 50 day. It seems to be trending upwards at the moment. We've just got to wait and see. Um, I think the, the true barometer, what happens with yields? What happens as far as, and we saw that 25 basis points, what happens as far as US dollar and the export driven economy of the US, how those uh, foreign companies, foreign countries are going to buy product and whether we're going to see continued earnings or relatively strong earnings in the next season. Now, that's the, that's the great dilemma when you've got rates running at that nearly 5% mark. There's a, you know, your PEs get crunched and it's going to be an interesting time ahead. So I'm not going out there to say we're going to see a, a big pullback, but let's just uh, wear through it. Yeah, definitely. And it's a great point. We were joking about it in the newsroom yesterday. Uh, the upcoming Australian, uh, sorry, US earnings season, it comes around so quickly, but it will be pivotal because, uh, well, of course, we'll all be looking at how companies are faring in this more difficult economic environment. Uh, but let's actually yeah. take a little bit of a pivot now because one thing that obviously got washed out in the news yesterday uh, because of the Fed was an inflation print in the uh, UK, which was higher than expected, quite considerably actually, heading into what yeah. is a Bank of England meeting tonight. So here's a look at the pounds. Take us through that a little bit and obviously what we're seeing here on the charts. Well, it came through at around about five past ten past six last night. I saw a buzz up on my screen. That's PM Sydney time. And I, I think it hit the market with a big surprise. It was not what was expected. The pound sitting there at the moment around about that 1.2318. So we've seen um, fall off against the US dollar, which in turn has been falling off against the likes of the yen and, uh, and the euro. So it's a double whammy for the pound against the US dollar. And at just 
I think puts a little bit of fear into the market as far as the pound, what what um, Bank of England next points are going to be as far as rate rises, how aggressive they'll have to be at that read that came in. I think it was around about 10.4. So it was far uh, greater than what uh, the market was expecting. And that in turn uh, is a delight in some ways, Kyle, in a, in a perverse way for traders because they've seen big moves and that in turn creates the opportunities when it's a 24 hour a day market like it is. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, well, one you always have to keep your eye on, be very careful because you can end up in a little bit of strife if you don't manage your risk carefully, as always. Absolutely. Uh, but let's get to, well, what has been perhaps the uh, trade of the last few weeks, whether you're an investor and like to get yourself exposure to gold stocks or prefer to trade the underlying, perhaps if you are uh, like us, piece, uh, fond of uh, the, the CFT product, uh, yep. gold. Uh, I thought we'd start with a weekly because we've got a weekly, daily, and then a uh, four hour chart. Starting with the yep. weekly, uh, tell us what you're seeing here and, and even a little bit of color on, on the gold market right now. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's had a nice rally in the last 24 hours. We were down at around that 1960 mark this time yesterday. I think it was, and we're now at 1995. So it's been strongly bid up through Asia trade and, of course, what happened in the States overnight. So there's the first part. I mean, you know, nearly a $40 move to the upside. So it's strong. Silver's also taken a nice rally up, and so did copper, up 1.5%. So we've seen US dollar come off, gold up. And where does it go from here? There could be resistance at that. I mean, you know, there's so many different factors at play. But it seems to be, um, well, it's certainly a lot higher than was two and a half weeks ago, Kyle, at 1810. So let's just, uh, let's appreciate that there's possibly more upside for gold, but it's very hard to call a, a ceiling to it or a top. So at the moment, traders are long and uh, they're enjoying this, you know, quick 24 hour turnaround. Yeah, no, most definitely. And uh, certainly caught in the crosshairs of the Fed too, I guess you could say in some sense. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll get to uh, the daily chart as well, just to, to reiterate there, that uh, that sort of $2,000 mark may be a key one to watch considering that's seemingly where the sellers came through uh, the, 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 I suppose, last peak of, uh, of yeah. the price action here. Well, exactly right earlier in the week, and I think we hit 2010-ish or 2011, and then it crunched down under 2000, it gave up a lot of that hot air, and then rallied right down to all about you know 1960. Since then, it's done a big reversal back up. So, you know, if you're looking at what we've seen this week alone has been a dramatic move, the best part of probably 60 to $70 or maybe more, of, probably more, probably $80 of market movement. So that just shows us, and with silver, silver's it. Don't don't uh, forget about little brother. It's back above twenty three dollars an ounce, and there seems to be a high amount of um, uh, speculation and and awareness across that precious metal complex. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll just wrap things up. Last but not least, of course, just to get a, a view on things in that four hour chart that you did provide, gives a little bit of a view there. And. Um, I'm sorry, shorter term price action. Uh, you've also just identified on the on the chart there's some uh, some bullish divergence that has emerged over well the last perhaps two or three trading days. Well, exactly, Kyle. I mean, you know, we we saw off that chart and that shows all the viewers out there um, where we where it could trend to. And I'm not saying it's going to trend through that 2,000 you know quickly, but I won't be surprised because there just seems to be a lot of momentum to the upside and. Uh, the old story, don't get in the way of a bull market. It's been dynamic over the last two and a half weeks and uh, it seems to be you know, onward and upward at the moment. But oh, I've got to be careful from a general advice standpoint. So it's just you know, the charts tell the story and it's just the way they're interpreted.